Welcome back to Pizza Dugout. This is episode number four of my Coventry City career mode, and we have got some belters to get through today. We start off with a quick look at the table, and as you can see, we are currently fifth, but only three points off the top spot, and we will be playing both Norwich and Preston today. But first off, we have Bristol City at home. But Pega still in for the injured Kim, and Edwards starts alongside Panzo. That is purely strategic to deal with the pace of Semenyo and Naki Wells. Fingers crossed, uh, I don't have to mention any goalkeeping errors today then. And we are going to pick things up in the second minute with a throw in in Bristol City's half. Hamer does brilliantly to create some space before laying off to Tavsan. No crossing opportunity this time, so the ball goes back to Hamer outside the foot and just past the post. So we stayed on the front foot 10 minutes in, so what was a scrappy old game. Neither side able to keep hold of the ball, and as Gaiacarez tries the ball over the top, an errant pass goes straight back to the Swede, and he just says enough of all that and smashes one top bins. 1-0 to the Sky Blues, and Bentley had absolutely no chance with that one. So that's 11 goals from 6 games for Big Vic. Are we a one-man team? Definitely. Uh, but straight from kickoff, I was really conscious of Bristol hitting back straight away with their pacey attackers. They play a few neat passes, but Alex Scott gives possession away cheaply to Hamer. He dribbles into the opposition half and finds Gaiacarez, who plays target man perfectly, holding the ball up to feed Papega on the overlap. He teases a wonderful ball across goal to the weight in Tavsan, and once again, Bentley is left helpless as we fire in our second of the game. 2-0, 16 minutes in, and this is just the start we needed. Bristol City finally woke up following the second goal, and they looked to attack 28 minutes in. They moved the ball quickly, and all of a sudden, Semenyo is threatening in our box. He patiently plays it back to Pring, who drives and plays a ball across the floor. Semenyo dummies it, and Wyman hits a first-time shot past Ron in. Fair play, that deserved a goal, and it's 2-1. Bristol City claw themselves back into the game, and it is game on. From kickoff, I decided to be direct. Tabsan was showing space down the right, and I knew his pace would be too much for the left back. He shows a quick turn of pace to burn the defender, and he's in behind. He keeps going, dribbling all the way into the box, and this time the Bristol keeper makes a big save to keep it at 2-1. From the resulting corner, Hamer swings one in, and Gaiacarez beats two men in the air to thump home his second of the day. 3-1, and Coventry have breathing space again. To be honest, I don't score too many goals from corners these days, so I'm really happy with that. And just as a side note, if you can see it, how nice is the Bri Bristol City goalkeeper kit? I absolutely love that. Just before half-time, Bristol tried to cut the deficit to one goal as Scott finds Viner in space, but his snapshot is pushed behind by Ronin. So we do take a two-goal lead into the break, and things are looking good at home for the Sky Blues. But we pick the action back up again with Bristol flanking down the right of our defence. Naki Wells finds Viner in way too much space. He cuts it back to Williams, but his shot is far too close to the keeper, and he smothers it. A warning sign nonetheless, and I wanted another goal to really kill the game off. She finds O'Hare and the defence just keeps on sagging off and daring him to shoot. So he does just that and finds the back of the net with a gorgeous strike on the edge of the box. 4-1 and Coventry in complete control of this one now. So time for subs now, and with this one done and dusted, I decided to rest some key players with the game against Norwich coming up in the back of my head. Gaiacarez, Hamer and Bapega come off for God and Ganelli and Allen. And 74 minutes in, we win a header from a goal kick, which sets off Ganelli down the left. Allen tidies up some loose play, and Godin is found with a through ball before chipping the Bristol shot stopper. That might just be my favourite one of the lot, and Coventry take a deserved 5-1 lead. With the game wrapped up, I made two more changes, with Eccles and Dabo coming on for Sheaf and Blackman, as Bristol attack following a throw-in. James plays in Wyman who opens his body up and he's shot from just outside the box, beats Ron in but he can't find the target and it remains 5-1. They didn't give up though and with just over 5 minutes left they work the ball down the right with Naki Wells again. He works the ball into Wyman and the incoming Williams just can't stretch enough to meet the cutback and we are able to clear. So the full time whistle blows and I am buzzing with that one. 5-1 at home to start the video off and hopefully we can take that momentum into the next game. So just a small matter of deadline day to deal with next, and to be honest, it was going to be a quiet one. We got all of our transfers done early in the window, and the only offers that came in were unrealistic destinations for Hamer and O'Hare, so they were both rejected. Uh, as it's the first of the month, we had a scouting update, and not so much luck with this time around. I did give one youngster a chance in Ethan Hopper. He's a 17-year-old CDM. He's 6'3 with a 4-star weak foot, but his overall is quite poor. 
Fingers crossed I can work on his development, so I'll keep you updated on that one. I also changed the position of Mora from right wing back to striker, and he shot up from 38 overall to 51, so obviously a much more suited position, and at 15 years old, I'll work on his development as well. It's very raw at the moment, but I'll give him the poacher plan to really work on his finishing and shooting in general. And I did bring in one free agent signing after the deadline, and that's a new gen from Ghana called Philip Hogan. Uh, this is just to cover off any injuries to Gaiocarez or Garden, and you'll notice his secondary position is left wing, so he can fill in there as well until Kim is back from his injury. But on we go then to Norwich away, and hopefully we would fare much better than in real life. I'm not sure how many of you watched the game on the weekend. Uh, Norwich won the game 4-2 in the end, but they were 3-0 up in 18 minutes before Coventry responded. A tough game ahead at Carroll Road and Ronnie Edwards keeps his place alongside Panzo in an unchanged team as Norwich look to strike first. They play a neat 1-2 before Huggill is found in acres of space in the box but Ronin is quick off his line and makes himself big to stop what would have been a sure goal. The home side had started much better than us though and I couldn't keep up with a quick pass in as Sara picks up Huggill, plays a delicate touch to Sargent and Ronin has to come to the rescue again. I was playing with fire as the corner is played short. Tavsan commits to the tackle but loses out and after Norwich play the ball into the box, a massive deflection falls into Sargent's lap and there's nothing Ronin could do to stop that one. 1-0 one Norwich. So obviously not the start we wanted at all but we'd been in this position before and I knew we had the quality to strike back. And speaking of quality, nobody in Norwich colours decides to pick up the informed youngster and he says why not? He bends it in, stunning equaliser from 20 yards out, 1-1. It had been a really cagey first half so far, with both teams scared to concede the nether before half time, but we did get one more chance around the 37 minute mark. Tabsan receives the ball from Blackman down the right and waits for the overlap from the American. He speeds down the line and sprays one across the floor to Gaiocarez, who turns nicely and fires past Gunn. How the Norwich defenders left the top scorer in the championship so wide open is beyond me, but we make them pay and it's 2-1 at the break. It's the perfect response to going behind as we flip the game on its head after a poor first 20 minutes and we get back to the action two minutes into the second half. One thing I have noticed with the AI on Ultima is that if you pass the ball well you can really drag the, the defenders out of position to create openings and we do just that with Hamer finding Tavsan on the right. He passes to O'Hare but Gunn pushes it over for a corner. But I'd kept Norwich quiet so far in the second half but 57 minutes in they win the ball back and create a nice passage of play. Sara finds Byram who had continued his run into the box. The ball is fed into Sargent who does the rest and makes it 2-2. I've got to be honest though, I love goals like that. Hit on the half volley into the floor and the keeper has absolutely no chance. I needed some fresh legs in the game and I made some big subs with Tavsan, O'Hare and Chief making way for Palmer, Allen and Ganelli. I could feel the game slipping away from me and I needed a change, but as Ida slots Sargent through on goal, Edwards makes a brilliant recovery tackle and Blackman heads it clear to Ganelli, who uses his fresh leg to turn, battles past Giannoulis and wrongfoots his defender to go through on goal. Nobody can stop my pacey substitute and he places a right-footed effort past Gunn to give us the lead once more. It's a brilliant solo run to make it 3-2 Coventry. After that goal I did make one more sub to protect the lead and it's Rose coming in for Edwards at the back for more fresh legs. But 5 minutes to go now and Norwich are looking for a way back into the game. But it's a sloppy pass from Byron that's cut out by Bidwell. He immediately finds Palmer and the fresh legs take over. He paces down the middle of the pitch until the defenders close him down. Waits for the perfect moment to release Ginelli into the box and his first touch eliminates everyone before squaring to Papega and that is game, set and match. Norwich get caught out on the break and we've done it. So it's another big win and this one takes us above Norwich and into the top three. Just two points off top spot. And as fate would have it, our very next game and the final one of the episode today is against league leaders Preston North End. So we go into the game in red hot form, full of confidence, but we've, we do have to be careful. They've only conceded five goals all season and we've let in more than double that with 11.
I did decide to make one change with Ganelli coming in to start ahead of Tabsan. He's been in brilliant form the last couple of games and really deserves a start, but otherwise we are unchanged and I really wanted to make a fast start and show Preston why we deserve to be up there with the team's fight for promotion. And 13 minutes in, we had our first chance of the game with the ball finding Chief in midfield. He spots Ganelli bursting down the right, takes a few touches to set himself, but his shot is saved well by Woodman. The fast start continued 20 minutes in as O'Hare holds the ball up well. He waits for Goyacares to make a run between the defenders and the big man shows great strength and speed to beat his man. Creates a better angle for himself with the touch in the box and has to dig the ball out from under him to give Coventry City a well-deserved lead. Preston was shook from the intensity we started the game with and things got worse after the goal as they gave the ball away almost immediately from kickoff. But Pega finds Hamer who sets O'Hare down the middle of the pitch and he does really well to beat the outstretched legs of the defender. He closes in on the Preston box before putting it on a plate for Hamer but his Travella shot skims the outside of the post and a brilliant chance goes begging. We really should be 2-0 up. 30 minutes in we broke again as Hamer has a world of space in the middle. Goyacarez plays a touch pass to Ganelli and his shot across the keeper is saved well and we can't do anything with the rebound. I couldn't believe how one-sided the first half was and even more unbelievable was that it was only 1-0. But we kept attacking as Sheaf gets Ganelli through on goal again. There was hesitation as we expected the goalkeeper to come and close the angle but he stayed home and the chip shot is absolutely awful and such a wasted chance. But right on the stroke of half time, Preston got themselves a corner and I would be absolutely fuming if they equalised after such a dominant half of football. But we clear the cross initially, it's fed back into the box and Ronin makes a smart save from the first time shot. It's 1-0 at half time. I did make one change at half time as O'Hare was looking really tired so Palmer came in to freshen things up and I knew I had to get a quick second goal to capitalise on a bright start before Preston got themselves back in the game. But it was Preston who came out fighting in the second half with a quick through ball to catch my defenders out. Johnson plays the ball across the box to Maguire and Panzo reacts well to turn it behind for a corner. Sheaf picked up a knock in the resulting corner but he does win the ball back in midfield before releasing to Hamer. The ball is put out wide for Blackman to cross and he dinks a smart crossover to the super sub Palmer who volleys home to make it 2-0. I absolutely love it when you make a sub in the second half and they come on to score an important goal in the match. But after the goal, I took no chances with the injury to Sheaf and I also took the chance to take off Panzo and Hamer. Uh, and they're going to come off for McFadzian, Allen and Eccles. Uh, but I did almost get burned immediately with my subs as I couldn't get hold of McFadzian and Brady is through on goal. But Ronin makes yet another save to hold on to his clean sheet. But from the resulting corner, uh, McFadzian does make up for his error by uh, clearing the ball with a strong header. And then he finds Palmer looking to start a break. He sees the space down the left hand side and he attacks, making his way down the left wing before hitting a world class cross into Ganelli, who brings it down and smacks it past Woodman to make it 3 0. A goal and an assist so far for substitute Palmer, and what a difference he's made since coming on. I didn't know Ganelli had those acrobatics in his locker, but anyway, uh, Preston looked so dejected after conceding on the break like that, and they really lost concentration as they give the ball away from kickoff again. Palmer keeps his head up and finds Goyacarez through on goal and you'd bet your house on him making it 4-0. But he hears footsteps and gets it all wrong, side footing his effort over the bar. Preston did get one more chance 77 minutes in as once again they take advantage of McFadzian's lack of pace to get in behind. They break with numbers and Johnson lays it off but the shot is straight down Ronin's throat and he's able to gather at the second time of asking. Dabo then receives the ball back from Ronin and he injects some pace into the game with the ball to Ganelli and Preston are wide open. He drags the defender inside with a few dribbles and then uses his pace again to burst down the right hand side before crossing into the box. Gaiacarez can't quite reach it with the diving header but, but Pega is on hand at the back post to finish the job and make it 4-0. So that's going to do it and as the full time whistle blows after a very impressive win... Don't look now, but Coventry City are top of the league after eight games on goal difference. The goal scored in the last three games definitely helping as we just pit Watt for the top spot. But that's going to do it for another episode of FIFA 23 Career Mode on Pete's Dugout. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you did like it, then please do drop a like and consider subscribing. I'm still working on that outro, but I'll be back with another episode very soon.